Sasaki. Uh, it's Wednesday, so you're watching Life in the Law, Wednesdays at Think Tech Hawaii. I'm delighted today to have uh, a colleague and a fresh perspective on the law. My uh, colleague, Nicholas Kaleo Fong, is with me today. Welcome, Nicholas. How are you? What do you want me to call you? Kaleo? Yeah, Kaleo. 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 Yeah. Um, I just found out that Kaleo was uh, like a diminutive for Nicholas, right? It's like a, a Hawaiian... Hawaiian Name for Nicholas? Mm. No? That's what Diane told me. <laughs> oh, well, all right. That's no, what she no, told me. It's my middle name. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the, what's, what's fascinating about Kaleo is that he just graduated from law school. He's waiting to be admitted to the bar. And as he went to law school, he worked his way through. So but tell me a little bit about how you, you decided to become a lawyer and how... Just, just tell me about the process. Um... I guess I was a, a political science major in college, and I, I guess law school just um, naturally followed that. I was always interested in it. Um, I kind of applied just to see I would get, if I would get in, right. and, I, and I did. Do you have an interest in a career in public service? Um, or did you ever? Yeah, yeah, I, I wanted to... Um, you know, help the indigent and, um, you know, volunteer when I could and, and, um, and give back to Kamehameha schools. Oh, good. So I graduated from Kamehameha. Oh, good. Well, you could, this is a public service because, you know, we're, we're free. We, co we go out on, you know, on the internet, as you know. And it's, this is a, think takes a public forum for people to express their opinions and uh, just to, you know, meet people of di varying walks of life. So you can consider this a little bit of public service. Great. Yeah. yeah. So you went, you started law school in 2012? 2013. 13? Yeah. And you went one year and then you worked and went to school. How was that? Yeah, I needed to um, start paying off my student loans. Um, so a lot of my classmates were getting summer internships, you know, and most of them were unpaid. And instead, I wanted to actually find um, a, a regular position, possibly at a firm, so I could get my, you know, my feet wet and get some practical experience. Right. And a funny thing was I applied for an entry-level filing position at Clay Chapman. Yeah. And I didn't hear back for a while, and I actually worked, started working at Tanaka of Tokyo as a host for a few weeks. Oh, and then you lucked out and you got, you got a job in your field. Yeah, thank I mean, God. We were talking, Kaleo and I were talking about how lucky is. I mean, so many people that graduate from law school now can't find jobs in their field. We're both really lucky to, yeah. to ha have jobs as a lawyer. Well, Kaleo's going to be sworn in when? November? November 18th. So this is a very, really exciting time for him. How was really studying exciting. for the bar? Was it re did, did you study a lot? Did, how was that? Oh, yeah, every day. Every day. Um, for hours, we had a set schedule. Um, I was studying with my my wife now, just the two of us. Right. We should say that Kaleo's wife is uh, uh, an intern. Not an intern. That's not the right word. A clerk. A clerk. Law, law, law clerk. clerk for which judge? Judge Nasino, First Circuit. Just Judge Nasino, First Circuit. How is it having two lawyers in the family? Do you have these very lawyerly discussions <laughs> about, about where I want to go to dinner or whatever? I always thought that was interesting. <sighs> you know, not yet. Um, we actually, we actually discuss like a lot of our, uh, some of our cases um, together, not not the details. No, and no, stuff. obviously we we but, uh, we um, have the utmost confidentiality of our clients <laughs> and mine. But you know, but just, just interesting issues, yeah. Right, yeah. right. So not too many arguments. Did yet. you study together? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, all throughout law school. Wow. You know, my husband's father is a judge, and so he always said the last thing on earth he'd want to be would be a lawyer. So <laughs> I, I, I've always been fascinated by, like, legal families, people that have lawyers in them. Like, there's some families that have everyone's a lawyer, you know, their yeah. father, their grandfather, their brothers and sisters. So, you know, it, it must be, it must, well, it's great to have somebody to study with. Oh, yeah, definitely. Just someone else to, to bounce ideas off. And she know. must be smart if she's a clerk. She she's, must be really smart, right? She's extremely smart. What's her name? Agle Vandenberg. Agle Vandenberg? Yeah, Aggie. Aggie. Yeah, and sh somebody told me she's from Belgium? Yes. How'd she end up here? She um, came for college, played tennis at UH. Ah. Yeah. So she said, I like this. 
I like it. Yeah. Here. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's great. So she so she passed the but you're both gonna be sworn in and you're gonna do anything special for your uh, admission? Um I don't know. Um we we took a trip after the bar for a few weeks to go to the mainland to see um her sisters, but after admissions, I think we're getting right back to work. You're going to work. They're going to. They, uh, our firm, Claire works at my firm, Clay Chapman, and our firm asked him to swear in early because that's how desperately they wanted him to practice law. No, they didn't ask they didn't? me. No, what? I just wanted to, you know. You wanted to swear in early? Possibly to relieve the pressure, you know, for from all the attorneys who are. That won't relieve the pressure. <laughs> oh, it's the whole bit. The whole like. The thing of being an attorney is you're constantly <laughs> under pressure. And if you don't walk around like, oh, I'm so overworked, I'm, I can't believe it, I can't take it, nobody will think you're a good lawyer. You have to always be too, too busy to do anything. Hey, well, you know, they've always been really good to me, so whatever I could do to help out, that's, I just want to... I know, do. it's a great firm. It's really a great firm. I, 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 you know, I worked at some large firms in New York City, and they were really very tough, and you're very lucky to have a place yeah. where everybody is you know, thoughtful and, and uh, you know, respectful yeah. and uh, no matter what your level is, you know. Yeah, definitely. So, you, you, so like, what do you do on a day-to-day? -day? Well, what will you be doing on a day-to-day -day basis, do you know? Um, I believe I will be going to most of our hearings. Um, and then... Uh, Have you ever gone to a hearing before? I've sat in, yeah. Right. Yeah, on... on on a lot of hearings. Right. Yeah. But you've never gone. Well, obviously, you're not an attorney yet. Right. I, you know, I, I was always, like, a little trepidatious be about going before the, the judge, you know. And then I guess after a little experience, it gets, it gets a little easier, right? Yeah, yeah. I think at first it might be a little um, stressful. Um, I might be a little nervous to speak in front of the judge, mm -hmm. but... But I think once you do it every day for a little while, right? I didn't realize that they sent they sent out you you know junior people to go to court. That's <laughs> you're really lucky to have that experience. Yeah. A lot of people don't have that experience. That's like true. at big law firms, sometimes people don't get to try their own cases for a very long time, and they're right. and they don't have the experience. Right. So, so tell me a little bit about yourself personally. Are you from Sacramento? I was born here in Honolulu. Mm -hmm. um, but we moved to Sacramento when I was about eight years old. Uh huh. Yeah, and then I actually came back my junior year of high school to go to Kamehameha. Oh, okay. Yeah. So tell me about Kamehameha. Why would you want to give back? What's I, I mean? I, I'm new. I'm new to the island, so I don't know anything. So you can tell me anything, and it'll be uh, news to me. So is Kamehameha? Are there? Is is it mainly a local school, and local kids go there? And it's, I, you know. Well, not necessarily. I mean, it's, it's a Native Hawaiian school. Oh, it's a Native Hawaiian school. Yeah, and they do give preference to Native Hawaiians. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. But like, like me, I, I was coming from Sacramento, so there are applicants right. to come in from all over the United States or. Do they, uh, do they, do they teach um, uh, like courses with, with respect to like indigenous uh, people or Hawaiian history or something like oh, that. Oh yeah. Oh, that would be great to. I should take a course oh, yeah. like that. Yeah. That, definitely. I mean, it, I, really, because I, I, you know, I don't know. I really need to learn more. It's. I mean, it's very hard to, you know, be a student at my age. But, but uh, that's great. And not all schools offer that, right? No. Um, I think it's well, Kamehameha is the, the only school with a Native Hawaiian preference policy but um, I mean I think most schools in Hawaii do offer Hawaiian language right. Hawaiian history you know I was talking to a teacher the other day and I promised you I wouldn't I wouldn't talk about politics and I'm not going to but she said that she was trying to teach you know civics and that this election was so crazy that it was hard to use as a teaching tool because it was so unlike any election she had ever seen before. So I thought that was pretty, I thought that was pretty interesting, you know. Oh yeah, I bet. Yeah, right, exactly, exactly. So were you interested in political science when you were at Kamehameha? Um, were you active? Uh, in the political community? Yeah. In high school? Yeah, did you do anything? Did you? <laughs> um, 
not not really um, in in politics. Um, a lot of Hawaiian Hawaiian projects. Um, I think it was called Kiave Vai, and we we went to Hilo to plant. Um, uh, was it koa trees? Really? Yeah, that's like terrific. A, like a small project. Kamehameha offers a lot of those opportunities. That's great, though. Yeah, and then that was one of the reasons why I um, also got an ethnic studies certificate. Right. And what does that mean, ethnic studies certificate? Like, what it, what is that? What does that require? Um, that was just. What ethnicity? First of all, is it Hawaiian? Well, for me, I think my focus was in Hawaiian, mm -hmm. but. Um, ethnic studies has a range of, of different departments within it. You can, there's, um, I think, F Filipino studies, Japanese. Oh, wow. Yeah. One reason I love Hawaii is because it's a crossroads of so many different cultures. I think it makes it, it's, it's a lot like oh, New yeah. York in that way. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of different people here and you can really learn a lot, you know, of, of, about cultures that, you know, at least I don't know about, you probably know about. So what made you, so what made you interested in Hawaiian culture just because you were going to Kamehameha? Um, I guess growing up in Sacramento, I didn't, get the same opportunity to to grow up with it and, and to, to learn it throughout, you know, at my young age. Right. So once I came back, I really wanted to to learn. And um, only being at Kamehameha for two years didn't really give me all of the, um, allow me to learn all the Hawaiian language or culture, even Hawaiian history that I, that oh, I so wanted to know. Oh, so you know Hawaiian language? And A bit. Yeah, that's terrific. <laughs> So tell me some, uh, I don't know, some important uh, or revelatory piece of Hawaiian history I ought to know about that I probably don't uh, know about. Is there anything real estate related? Because Kaleo practices real estate law, as do I. Um, the, the Great Mahele, I think, was... <laughs> yeah, right, but I, uh, what is that? The Great Mahele was like, um, man, it's been a while, but I think that's that was like the when um, private property was, the, the, the concept of private property was created in Hawaii. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, oh, because I, I know I have a book, I have a book that the, the great Mahale, Mahale yeah. uh -huh. and, uh, but I haven't read it. And I know that it's very significant if, if you yeah. want to practice real estate, because it, it's sort of like the underpinning of all the, right. you know, real estate law in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So, let's see, what else should we talk about? You're a surfer. Yeah, I like to surf <laughs> whenever I can. Okay, well, we'll hear more about surfing and the struggles of a young law lawyer <laughs> when, when we come back in a, just about a minute. It's My name is Ray Tsuchiyama. I was raised in Kalihi Palama, a proud graduate of Farrington High School. And I wanna say that ThinkTech is a great program brings people together and creates a really great community of concerned citizens for the future of Hawaii. Hawaii is the state of clean energy. I'm Jay Fidella, Sharon Mori, Waki, and Howard Wig. We believe in energy and in the month of what? October. October. Energy awareness, but we're in prep. We're in October. prep for October. We talk today about October. What? Keska say the important thing about October, Sharon Moriwaki. October is Energy Awareness Month, where we'll come together with all kinds of um, activities for energy awareness, energy efficiency, as well as all the other kinds of activities. But in September, our Energy Wednesday will focus on energy efficiencies. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of, well, you just saw Derek Sonoda on LED lights. But the whole idea is that we can do a lot more with the megawatt moments yeah. and, and have a whole series for the month of, of uh, September. Yeah. And Howard is helping me coordinate mm -hmm. that whole mm -hmm. series. He's the guru of energy efficiency. And, uh, he's the producer um, he, of all the these shows all in October. These shows. And, mm -hmm. and what we really want to focus in on that's is September. Is, it's September yeah. is, yeah. is Energy Efficiency Month. Yes. Beyond the awareness, we need to get efficiency started up and now. So what do you got in store, Howard? Okay. Question. 
which city in the U.S. is the most energy efficient such that it is looking already at zero net energy, at producing as much energy as they consume? There's one city in the U.S. It's not in California. It's Seattle. My guest next week is Dwayne Jolin. He is in charge of energy conservation for the entire city of Seattle. Think this guy knows what he's talking about? Yes. Yeah. It's going to start with lighting and then he's going to go gangbusters from there. Okay, and after that? And then we have Dan Bissell from KIUC, the Kauai Independent Utility. Island. J Island. Kauai Island Utility Co-op. And they recently, at in the middle of the day, attained 100% clean energy, an entire utility. This is unheard of. And they're building more. Hi, I'm Marianne Sasaki. You're watching Life in the Law. I'm delighted today to be speaking to Nicholas Kaleo Fong, a colleague of mine, young lawyer in my firm, and surfer, as we just found out right before the break. But let's talk a little bit about the firm. So was it hard to get adjusted? I mean, you must still be adjusting, right? Um, well, it's definitely always a learning process, right. never never a shortage of, of new things, but um, I've actually been there for a few years, so like I said, um, after my first year of law school, so it's been a little over two years now. So, you know, I'm surprised that you chose to be a lawyer because everybody says, oh, don't be a lawyer, it's like so hard. What Did you ever think about that? Actually, a few people told told me that before law firm. school. No, 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 no not from oh, the firm. Oh, okay. But um, just other people who had gone through law school. Yeah, lawyers tell you that usually. <laughs> yeah, right. I always wondered what, what that was about. Well, there's some people that really shouldn't go to law school. And, <laughs> and, you know, they really shouldn't have, but they couldn't figure out what else to do, so they ended up <laughs> going to law school. Really, it's really it's really unfortunate. But I, you, you know what else? I, so you represent the millennial generation at the firm. And you're yes, the future, so. and but you, you said you don't identify with millennials. Why not? Yeah, I don't think of myself as a millennial. Maybe just I don't know. I, I listen to oldies. Do and, you? Yeah, and um, I'm terrible with technology. Are you really? So, <laughs> so I don't know if I'm. That's unusual. The, to be te terrible with technology, did that affect law school? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, I had to like borrow computers just to take um, tests right. or finals, right? Um, because my computer couldn't support the exam software. Uh, so did you upgrade? Are you gonna up? You should upgrade. I guess I need. And, yeah. And you should. I hope. I hope your Lexus is good because you're le you'll ha you'll need your Lexus. Yes, my my Lexus skills are um, are are pretty good. So what do you? Decent. Oh, good, good. <laughs> so what do you think of some of the challenges like like? social challenges fa facing people you're in. Do you have particular concern like about the environment or any social issues? Um, I don't know. I think I think it's it's different. I think the, the, the difference in um, generations is it's it's interesting you know we're being categorized as millennials right i mean you're a very important market for like advertising and i mean everybody wants to know who you're voting for what you're thinking but i'm kind of hearing that you're saying you're not one big group of that does everything the same yeah i don't i don't think so um Do you, uh, do you have siblings? I do. What, how, how, how many siblings do you have? I have three siblings. Wow. Are they boys and girls? My, my oldest sibling is um, a girl. Uh-huh. Sister. She is... How old is she these days? Like 38, I believe. Are, th are they millennials? I, see, I wouldn't, see consider, I wouldn't consider her a millennial, no. What? I, I still don't consider myself a millennial. Maybe my younger brother. I have a younger brother who's 23. Right. And I would, I would consider him a millennial. Then what do you, so what do you think a millennial? <laughs> like, what, what to you is a millennial? I don't know. He's just better with technology than me. Oh, <laughs> and he listens to this new type of music. And uh, 
I don't know. I guess he is he is a little more into politics too. Me, not so much. You have to come down to think tech more often if you're not into technology <laughs> and learn about that because that's that's I, our our strong suit is yeah, technological I, developments I and see all this. and well or, and all our shows like a lot of our shows are technology oriented. So you should I, yeah. yeah tune in. You'll be able to learn. I, so how how did you get? not to be involved with computers. I mean, I met, that must be hard at your, your age. You, you know what I mean? Because everybody's on, online, everybody's texting everywhere. and Yeah, I guess I, I text, but that's about it. I don't have a, never got into Facebook. Um, We're on Facebook. Yeah, I, I see. Thumbs up. I see. Like us on Facebook. Yeah, and we're on Twitter. <laughs> and if anybody Twitter. has a conversa a question, they can call in. That you can call in at four one five eight seven one two four seven four. If you have a question about how hard it is to pass the bar and become a young lawyer and get a job, which is super hard and super important, so your parents must be very proud of you. They are. Yeah. Yeah. And it feels feels really good. Once we got the results, I was so relieved. I called them. Instantly. Did you really? Did you really think there was any chance not of not passing the bar? It's tough to say. You know, coming out coming out of the exam, I was I was confident, but exhausted. Right. And it was it was definitely hard. Right. You know, the was, bar for people who might not know, maybe not everybody watching as a lawyer, is a two day two day eight hour a day or six hour a day uh, test that we have to take before we're admitted. Yeah. So it's really a grueling experience. It's like a marathon. Oh yeah. You yeah. Know? It's you have to keep on top of your game for like two days. It's just you know. Not only do you need to have like the the legal knowledge to pass, but also the mental endurance. Right. To exactly. Keep, to keep you know, and going through the whole thing. Yeah, and not like flip out and get like really scared. <laughs> exactly. But you know, exactly. that's true about being a lawyer, you know. Um, mm. Composure is very, I mean, I think you'll be a really good lawyer because you're very composed and composure is a very big part of being a lawyer because when you're in court, uh, you know, if somebody confronts you, you have to be able to think on your feet yeah. and, you know, mm -hmm. develop an argument and not get, Rationality, I guess, is very important if you're a lawyer, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Right. <laughs> so, do you, do you read? I mean, do you read books about the law, or or watch movies about the law, or? I uh, we watch shows about the law. Oh, you do? <laughs> what do you watch? The Good Wife. Oh, Never I mean, I've Good never Wife? watched that show. Yeah, it's I really start, good. Is it really good? It's really good. I should start watching it from the beginning because you know. I really identify with that character because she's mm -hmm. like about my age, and, and I worked at a, a firm, a bigger firm, when I was in New York. And uh, but I never—it's been on for a very long time. Yeah, it's on like seven, eight seasons. Right. Yeah, we and when we were in law school, we loved to you know watch movies about about the law. We particularly liked to watch movies where people went to Harvard. Like <laughs> that was like what people would do. They'd get together on Friday nights and watch like Tom uh, Cruise or somebody yeah, yeah. in in a legal movie. You know what's funny is is the Good Wife. We we're actually my wife and I were watching it through our bar study. You know, oh, like we, maybe right. like an episode no, a night sure. after. As as you're, you have to do something else. You can't just study, study, yeah. study. And it's actually pretty accurate on the law. We would it would like say something and it would clarify what we've been learning a little bit on on either civil so procedure, or just just these little things. That's interesting. It was it was it was interesting. Well, you know you have respect to show that um, it cares so much about its subject that it cares that it's it's accurate yeah. you know I mean mm -hmm. that that kind of quality shows up in other other areas of the show too yeah. mm -hmm. you know so oh so I can get a little good this is good because <laughs> I'm doing litigation now which I have no I really very little experience in and uh, I could use some procedural uh, oh. some procedural tips and some litigation tips mm -hmm. Yeah. Although I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm li remembering my procedure. Did you like procedure in school? Uh, I thought it was a little dry. Yeah. Um, but it can be fun to sort of outmaneuver the other side, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. True. If you, you know, if you like to win and you, you use a little, like a little known. Mm -hmm. uh, Barack Obama apparently was really excellent at that, using little known rules to get to get um, advance his case, or he, really? I think, did it when he was a. Senator, a state senator in Illinois, he used some rule so that the other person 
uh, was not challenging him. Yeah, he's very, very wow. clever that way. So what do you think about the end of the Obama presidency? That he's like the only president that you know, right? Pretty much eight years. Well, <laughs> I mean, since you've been, you know, involved in high school and stuff. Um, yeah. I think not ending ending his presidency, uh, I haven't kept up with it so much, but it looks seems to me like on the news he's kind of just winding down, just kicking back. Just chilling. And, did, yeah. did you see him on what Jimmy was it Jimmy Fallon? Where, oh no, oh, no he, Stephen Colbert. Yeah, where yeah. Stephen Colbert did him did an interview uh, with him about like a job exit interview. It was right, very funny. Yeah. It was very funny. Yeah, he's one thing I like about the president. I think that he's so. Has such a good sense of humor, and I think he's the mm -hmm. most plugged in of anybody, any president that I can remember, and I can remember a lot of them. <laughs> I really can. Yeah, but he he's he seems to know what people are thinking and know when mm -hmm. to address what you know people are thinking yeah, about. Yeah, he's really good. I like him a lot. Yeah. Definitely. So when did you start surfing? Um, well, I came back um, from uh, Sacramento, moved back. Mm -hmm. And then I started bodyboarding at first mm -hmm. for a long time. And then I started stand-up surfing maybe four, three, four years ago. You know, surfing is a great way to meet other lawyers. There's so many surfing lawyers. It's true. If you go to the bar, you'll meet so many surfing. I was kind of jealous, but I don't, I don't think I could learn at this point. But um, Miles Briner is a big surfer. He's a big criminal lawyer. Really? And I know other surfing lawyers, yeah. The, well, I, I know a lot of surfing professionals, actually. It's a good yeah. way to unwind after a, like, tense day, I guess. Yeah. You know? You, you know. The the legal community actually has a um, a lawyers surf competition every year. Does it? Yeah, when it's is called it? called the Land Shark. It's usually in September. Really? Yeah, yeah. And I've I've competed in a few. You've been competed in the Land Shark. Yeah, wow, that's cool. Year. It was really fun. Next year we'll have to cover it. We'll have to go uh, oh, yeah. live from the Land Shark and watch all the surfing attorneys. Definitely. The, did you? Were there a lot of kids from school? That a lot of guys you knew? There's a few and a lot of attorneys too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, judges are invited. Judge, I'd love to see a surfing judge. So, God, that so would be I. great. We have a costume contest too at the very end. So everyone dresses up and then tries to catch a wave while while in their costume. See, who, who says lawyers aren't fun? <laughs> We're really fun. We're really, yeah. really fun. Yeah, so, definitely. well, I hope you had fun today. Oh, yeah. We're, a lot yeah, of fun. It was, we, we, we like to uh, keep it uh, light here and, and uh, inform people of uh, areas they don't know. So I'm, I really appreciate your coming. No, thank and you for having me. Yeah, you really, yeah, it, it was really, really great, really great getting to know you. So thank you very much. Thank you. I, so I'm Marianne Sasaki. You've been re watching Life in the Law. Tune in Wednesdays 1 to 1.30 uh, on ThinkTech. Thank you for joining us.